Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Buttonshy Games River Wild by Stephen Arminis. In this game, you are basically going to be starting with a basin, a waterfront running from a mountain. And you're basically going to be getting a number of cards. And you'll be taking these cards and placing them down on the basin to then create running streams of water. These water areas are going to go down the mountainside and hopefully create protected land. Protected land are basically land areas guarded off by water. In those areas you're going to have either critters or you're going to have a way to score points. And when you've secured a full protected land you'll see whether you do so. Basically one thing might be you need a frog and a unicorn and another thing might be that you need one of every type of animal. And if you meet those requirements you'll score the points. And every single time you play a card you'll put a new card out and then you'll play the other card and you'll keep doing that until your entire deck is empty. Once your deck is empty you're going to score all the protected lands that you have on the field. You'll also score for every single objective that you meet, whether it be on the largest area of land you control or any of the smaller ones, and then whether or not you meet the conditions for them. Check your rank to see how well you did, whether you be an embarrassing environmentalist or whether you have the most heavenly haven possible. And if you want, you go again and you try and beat your score. It's a pretty simple game with a unique concept. Let's talk about how to set it up, how to play, and my review. Setting up River Wild is actually quite simple. You'll take your mountain card with the water running down with no scoring objectives on it and you place it down in front of you. Then you'll take the rest of your game cards and you're going to shuffle them up to form a deck. From there you're going to deal out three of them whether they be in your hand or next to you somewhere on the uh, gameplay area. And finally you take your rank card slash scoring card and place it next to your basin so that you know how well you did and what you need to do for scoring. After that you're ready to play. Yep, simple game like that. Playing the game River Wild is as simple as setting it up. Basically on your turn, you'll select any one of the three cards either in your hand or next to you. And then you will form basically more water that connects to the water. You can choose to have half go to a full and the other half go to the full as well. You can choose a full to connect to a half and so on and so forth. You cannot have land connect to water or water connect to land, however. And you're trying to create protected lands, which are lands surrounded by the river. Also note on each of the cards is going to be an animal, whether it be a jackalope, a dragon, a unicorn, or a frog, and you'll be placing them down and attempting to either score on one side or gain more animals on the other. Once you've placed one down, a new card is going to come from the deck into the space that was emptied, or if you have a hand of cards, go ahead and just draw an extra card, and then you can once again play another card, and you'll simply take the card and place it down. A new card is then going to come out, and you will rinse and repeat. You'll take another one of these cards here, and you'll place it down and refill, and you're trying to just create protected lands. And here, as you can see now, I have created a protected land. Protected land meaning that there is a river on each side, and that all the rivers are connected correctly. So well, you can tell when it looks like it's, corrected, uh, it's placed correctly because all the river areas are completely full. Then you'll note that at the end of the game, you're going to score two points for every single protected land that you have. Now remember, rivers can branch one way or another. You can create multiple protected lands on the same row. And each of these lands are going to have certain types of creatures as well as scoring. So in this case here, this guy says that if I have a frog and it is my lowest uh, type of protected land, I meaning it has the least amount of lands connected to it, um, then it's going to score two points. However, it's, if it's my biggest land, it's going to score one point, but I have to have that frog. The bottom one here says I need a dragon and a frog, in which case I do have the dragon, but remember I don't have the frog here. However, I have this little rune here, and I'm going to choose this rune to be a frog, which means that this is going to connect here as a frog. So now I have the frog for this objective, and I have the dragon and the frog for this one, meaning I'm going to score two points and four points if this is a smaller protected land than my largest one. But yeah, I'm just going to keep going from there. I'll just go ahead and take another one and simply rinse and repeat. But yeah, that's the idea. You're just simply going to take a card, place it down and make sure that it fits the requirements, um, and then try and create as many protected lands as possible. And you always have to place a card below another card. I can't just simply place a card out to the side or on this side here. It has to fill at least a portion of the river here so that I could then get new cards to place out to try and make protected lands. And a protected land must have water all the way around it. And basically once all the cards in your deck have been completed and you have this entire big like river River of water flowing all the way down, then that's when you're going to score each of your lands. And you're going to go through this little scoring component here where you'll score two points for each protected land, and then you'll score either the high value or the low value, depending on whether or not that protected land is your biggest or any of your small ones. And then you'll check to see how well you did. 
If you get from 0 to 29 points, you scored the most lowest points possible. And 45 plus is the most you can possibly score. It's if you're really, really good. But yep, that's the basic idea of the game River Wild. Now, let's review it. So River Wild is a game in which you're trying to basically create a river that flows down with certain protected lands that you'll score points for. And then hopefully you'll score points for their objectives that are met on the lands themselves. Making sure to always check for these little rune areas that will provide you an extra scoring benefit whenever they see fit on the areas trying to make certain branching pathways that create more protected lands because the more is more is better, and also making sure that you have the right animals for each of those locations. Every time you play this game, you're gonna have a unique different type of river basin that flows out, and each time you're gonna have different types of scoring. There's a bit of random luck and chance as to what cards you have available and what animals are attached to those cards, so you'll need to be careful about when you choose to play, and sometimes it might be better to wait quite a while before playing a card down because you know they're gonna come up in the deck. With memory, with this game, comes more value because you're going to start remembering what cards are available in the deck, when you can play them and how they can benefit you, and that's how you're going to get the best score. And also, knowing what's coming up on the top of this deck here. Being able to suss out what types of objectives you need and when you need them, and scoring them or choosing the animals as a point to make sure that you score something can be beneficial in the game. Also noting how you choose to place your cards down to kind of create the basin and understanding that when you have multiple objectives on a location, it's likely you'll need multiple animals or multiple runes in order to secure them. Sometimes it's better than placing to place one card at a time as opposed to two cards at a, time, at a time because you need to make sure that maybe something on the deck might help you later in a better way. When you start this game off and you start playing this game, it's going to be rather challenging and you're probably not going to score higher than maybe 20 points. But as you continue playing, understanding the cards, understanding how you can create the rivers and form these protected lands, you'll start scoring more and more points. Being able to score these bigger points with smaller islands is the most important thing. I call islands protected lands. Um, and making sure that you score any of the points from the smaller ones is useful as well. And overall, just making you sure you score points with these tiny little lands is going to be super important. River Wild is a small game, it's a simple game, and it's a solo game. This is going to be a game that only people who play by themselves are going to enjoy, because most likely you're going to be playing by yourself with this game. Uh, I did notice that when me and my wife were playing this game, I would play, she would give me hints and tips, and vice versa, and so there's kind of a cooperative experience that you can entangle with this game, especially when your partner is more... Is more um, more intelligent when it comes to placing down for puzzles. That's kind of what this game is. But overall, this is a solo player experience and you'll get better with time. This is a fun little lighting card card game. They did a very good job. The art is pretty, the different animals are fun and everything works really, really well. If you don't mind the chance and having to kind of formulate based on what you have available to you, maybe setting aside cards for, to wait for later and building up farther, then you're gonna like this game. If you're looking for a solo player experience that has a lot of different ways to play it, but still plays pretty much the same way each and every time, then River Wild is something I definitely suggest you take a look at. This is a really cool little game. I really enjoyed it, but it's gonna be niche for certain types of people. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, River Wild. If you're interested in picking up this game, you can go ahead and check out Button Shy's website, there is a pre order area available to you. You can also go and check out our website on filteredgamer.com blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget, if you would like and you'd like to see, if you've seen maybe one or more of our videos and you appreciated them, to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you think we've earned it. And of course, the little bell notification so you can see more of our videos. We create a video once every other day, once every day, pretty much every week, Monday through Friday. And we do a live stream on Saturdays or Sundays and Wednesdays on whatnot for Wednesdays and Sa Sundays is. Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube at 6 30 p.m. PST for both. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to making a river wild with you next time.